Jagrata. Mm-hmm. One of the most difficult concepts to discuss, to understand, to come into harmony with is the word dharma. We really don't have a word that it translates into in English that captures the true depth and meaning of what the word dharma means. The only way to really understand dharma is to become it, to go there, to experience what that is. It's more of an energetic harmonization than it is a philosophical concept. And when we're done discussing that, you're going to see that the true meaning of the Tao, as presented in the Tao Te Ching by Lao Tzu, is really Dharma. In truth, they are the same thing. The real deep meaning of this. So it's something very great, Dharma. The problem is, until you experience something, it's very difficult to understand it. It just becomes a mental thing. And in truth, the way we understand things that we haven't experienced is to relate them to things we have experienced. So it's sort of like if you've never seen a dog, but you live in a country that has a lot of cats, it's going to be, well, it's bigger than a cat. And (laughs) it's going to go from there. You're just going to see a cat that looks a little different than the one you saw before. But it's not going to be a dog. That's what's truth about these deep things. But let's try. In order to understand Dharma, you first have to understand what's called a Dharma. What is not Dharma? That we know very, very well. So if I were to carry out a not Dharmic action, an a Dharmic action, what it would be is as follows. I have walked into a situation. I don't care what it is. It's a situation. How many factors are there that created that situation. My mind's not big enough to even begin to understand. Billions and trillions of past incidences, factors, actions, etc. have taken place that have created any situation I find myself in. So that's the first truth about every situation you find yourself in. It has nothing to do with you. It has to do with itself. It is taking place not because of you. It is totally impersonal. It is taking place because of all the forces and factors of creation, past and present, that have come together to a greater or lesser extent to cause the current moment to exist. That's what it is. It's not a discussion. It's not a philosophy. There's not a scientist that wouldn't agree. That is reality. That's what's going on. Forces create results. Causes create results. And whatever causes took place ended up creating this result. How do you know? It's there. That's how I know. All of reality proves that it's true, doesn't it? You are of a certain height, a certain race, a certain age, a certain everything else. Why? You want to spend the rest of your life? Come up with all the variables. It's everything. It's your DNA, it's your mommy, it's your daddy, it's your grandma, your grandpa, et cetera, et cetera, (laughs) right? It's all of that, plus it's your social upbringing, plus it's everything you ever ate, plus it's what effects happened to you. Maybe you got a bad trauma, so you bent over a little bit when you were young and you still could be taller, (laughs) right? I'm just telling you, all of it comes together and sums together to create everything. And then that is what you are presented with. All right, now I'm going to show you the epitome of, I actually have to create another variable before I can show you the epitome of a dharma, of non dharmic action. So that is what is going on outside of you. I don't want to keep repeating it. I just want you to understand and buy in that there's nothing to think about. There's no discussion about it. It is what all of science is about. It is what everything is about, which is, Newton said, for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. Whatever happens becomes the cause of the next energy that's going to happen. And if you put all these energies together, they sum up what is. All right, so that's one force in creation, creation. What's another force? There is another force. We've discussed this before. There's another force other than that creation, yes. There's a competing force to that creation. How could there be? You'll see. 
inside of you, not outside where the laws of physics work, inside of you, you have mind. You have emotions. You have your personal being. What's its relationship to this unfolding that's happening? Unfortunately, none. You walk into a room. That room is the result of everything that ever was. Everything that happened five minutes ago in the room, everybody that's in the room, everything that happened to them five minutes ago, right? You weren't in the room. You have in your head thoughts about what you want to do in the room, about what you want going on in the room, about what should be going on in the room, what shouldn't be going on in the room, what other people should be wearing, what food they should be serving, what music should be playing. I don't care if you're negative or positive. It doesn't make any difference to me. You have going on in your head something about the room that has nothing to do with the room. It's not based on the factors that made up the room. It has nothing to do with the factors that made up the room. You weren't even there. You don't even know who's there. It's a new party. You've never been. There's the first time you're ever going. But you have in your mind all that stuff I just said, don't you? Where did it come from? If it didn't come from all the forces that are making up the room, where did that stuff in your mind come from that knows what's supposed to be going on in the room? It's very interesting and it's very simple. Whereas what is going on in the room is the result of all the past experiences manifesting now, what is going on in your mind is the result of all your past experiences manifesting into it your views, opinions, preferences, likes, and dislikes about what's going to go on in that room when you walk in. Last week, you had a fight with somebody. Do you want them to be there? No. You haven't talked to them since? It's just seeing them would ruin your evening. So do you have a view as to whether that person is there? Yes. And is that person in that room? No. Now, notice that the fact that you decided that, that that got built in your mind, you feel very strongly about it, has absolutely nothing to do with what's going on outside. Nothing. You know, you don't know anything. That person might be the cousin of the person who owns the house. They might have put the party together. You don't know anything. Nothing. You're totally, completely ignorant. So nothing going on in your mind is about reality. It's about the past and whether you liked it or not. What if the same person interacted with you and you liked the interaction? What if you had an argument with the person, but it was about a specific thing, and you went on the web and found out you were right, but you didn't have the evidence at the time you were discussing with that person? Do you want the person to be there? Yes. (laughs) It's just something you're making up in your mind. That's the best I can say. You have these past experiences. So notice, they're your past experiences. That's one thing about what's going on in your mind. It's only about you. That which is going on in that room is not only about you. In fact, it's not about you at all. It's about all the forces of nature and all the forces of creation that create the room. It's very, very big. What's going on in your mind is very, very small. It's totally fixated on you. It's egocentric. It's your experiences, and it's not just your experiences. It's your experiences and whether you like them or not, which is also you. And then you store them in there, and then before you go into that room, There's all this concept and views and opinions and preferences and hopes and dreams and likes and dislikes before you even open the darn door about everything, every single moment that is going on. So now you have two forces in creation. You have reality and make-believe. Sorry. (laughs) You have reality. You have that which creation is creating. It's as it must be. How can the result of all that ever was not be what must be? <laughs> you understand that? I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's good. Right, good, wrong, bad. That's your stuff. You're labeling that. You're doing that. That out there is neither right nor wrong within itself. It is the result of what is. There's a tidal wave. That's wrong. No, it's science. Okay, there was an earthquake, and there's a shallow part of the ocean, and it vibrates off of it, and the water is very loose, and so it goes up high, and that's how you get it. And they can exactly predict exactly how high the tidal wave will be and where it's going to go once they know all the factors and forces, which unfortunately they never know beforehand. But if they did, (laughs) they could. So I'm going to take you very deep. You can't say it's right or wrong. I mean, you can, but you're doing it based on what you made up. 
You're not doing it based on reality. So reality is not right or wrong. It is what is. It is the result of what is. Now, I'm going to give you some room. Don't get your mind in an uproar here about, oh, then it's all deterministic and it's predestination. And what about free will? I'll get there. I promise you. I will give you free will. But let me clue you in. Your free will has nothing to do with what is unfolding at this moment. It may have something to do with what's going to unfold in a few moments. But by definition, it has nothing to do with what's unfolding right now. Your free will is not going to do anything about what is unfolding in front of you. It is the result of God's free will. (laughs) It is the result of creation. It is the result of all the forces that ever were coming together to create right now. Fair enough? All right. You bring into that equation, into that world, what is going on inside your mind that we've just told you is from a totally different source. It's from the source of your past experiences, but they're not like like what's going on in this room is the result of the forces that just happened. They manifest right now. What's going on in your mind might be the result of what mommy did when you were five and you're 60. Does that ever go on in your mind? <laughs> right? We, go talk to the psychologist. Right? They're going to tell you that your formative years, the past experiences you have, all influence the way your thoughts pop up at any given moment. So how out of tune are these two forces with each other? Is there any possibility they are in harmony with each other? Ever. There is no possibility ever that those two worlds are in harmony with each other. They come from totally different places. And by the way, the one out here has no motives. It has no intention. It has no motives. It is just physics. It's impersonal. What is out there is impersonal. It has nothing to do with you. It is just science, it is physics, it is creation, it is God. I don't care what you want to call it. But I like what we just did, and you all shook your head. We just said, I don't care whether it's God or science, they're the same. What it is, is not you. That's what matters. That's all that matters. It's not you. You didn't do it, and you're not doing it. It is whole within itself. It is an equilibrium. It is the result of all that ever was manifesting now. That sounds like God, and it sounds like science. Maybe they're the same. I don't know. I don't care. All I know is not me. But what about what's going on in here? Thank God. I can make it do anything I want in there. Right? That's like, that is just me. That's only me. What is going on inside of you is not going on inside of me. And we're both about to walk through that door into that party at the same time. And yet I assure you that there's no possibility that what is going on inside of you is the same as going on inside of me. Why? Because the causes of what is going on in you are totally different than the causes in you. You you had totally different experiences in your life. I always quote Skinner, man is the sum of his learned experiences. Wrong. Your mind is the sum of your learned experiences. You who notices that your mind is the sum of your learned experiences is not the sum of your learned experiences. So it is not proper to say man is the sum of his learned experiences. But it is proper to say that your mind, your psyche, your thoughts and feelings are the sum of your learned experiences. Notice what I just did for your thoughts. You know it's true of your feelings. Your feelings are not yours. They are just the result of the sum of your learned experiences. When you see a snake, you get scared. When he sees a snake, he gets all excited. Because you grew up in a home where nobody touched bugs and nobody dealt with insects and we never swam in the pool because there could be snakes there and, you know, etc. And you grew up in a home where your father was into all reptiles and they crawled around the house a lot, you know, just there. And that's what it was. So you have a totally different experience. When When you see a really big snake, you freeze and faint and die, right? You get so excited. Oh my God, the size of that rattle. Look at the size of the rattles. Oh my God. Like, you just can't even handle it. You're blissing out and you're freaking out. That is the sum of your learned experiences, isn't it? Who's right? It's just what is. So what's outside is what is, and what's going on inside of you is the laws of psychology instead of the laws of physics, if they really understood it. It is just the sum of your past experiences going all the way back to your formative years. In fact, they will tell you mostly from your formative years, which means obviously it has nothing to do with what's in that party. Your party wasn't there during your formative years, and nobody in there was lived where you lived or had anything to do with you. What I want to impress on you 
is how out of tune these two things are. I don't know that anything could be more out of tune than those two fields of creation, okay? The outside and the inside have nothing to do with each other. That's neat, isn't it? And what happens is, because you live in there, you don't live out here. You live in there. Your consciousness, hi, you're in there. All of these thoughts are very close to you. Not only because they're close to you. I mean, how much closer are your thoughts to you than that person out there? How much closer are your thoughts about that person out there than the person out there? Like way closer. Like way closer. Like watch. The person gets up. She she got up and walked out. My thought says, oh, she has to go to the bathroom. How are you doing? Fine. She got up and walked out. My thought says she doesn't like the discussion. She's making believe she's going to the bathroom so she has to listen. (laughs) How are we doing? (laughs) Doesn't matter what she did, does it? Like, that's nothing. What matters is what it's stimulated in my thoughts. That's what I'm going to interact with. So because I live in here and because my thoughts are closer to me, way closer, like way closer or in my face, right? And because they're only about me, and I'm really invested in all that stuff, that's what's real to me. Whoa. So I just got through telling you these two things are completely out of harmony with each other. They have nothing to do with each other, and I just told you whose side you're on. So what's going to happen? What's going to happen is you're going to buy into what your thoughts say. That is your reality. Even though we both know that what's going on out there is reality. That's reality. You're of this height. You're in love with that person. Your drum broke, right? It's just reality. There's just reality out there. You got a pimple on your cheek before going to your high school prom. It just came up right then. It's just reality. I don't know what to tell you. That's reality. But you don't buy that. Never, ever have you ever bought that as reality. What you buy as reality is that wasn't supposed to happen. What you buy as reality is what is said inside of here. And that's where right and wrong come from. And that's where good and bad come from. That's where all that stuff comes from. Where does it come from? Your mind tells you. Why do you think something's right and somebody else thinks it's wrong? Why do you think something's good and somebody else thinks it's bad? It's neither good nor bad nor right nor wrong. It just is. Your mind makes up all of this stuff. And since you're so close to it, that's what you buy into. That's the world you live in. Then what happens? You look in relationship to that world out into the real world out there and you judge. That's what the word judging means. You judge. The third gen patriarch said to give up, to end the burdensome practice of judging. This is what we're talking about. What do you mean I judge? You don't let be out there what's out there. You look at it, you judge it in relationship to what's in here. And you say good, bad, right, wrong, better. Better is really an interesting one. Better than what? All in relationship to what's going on in my head. So now you walk into the world and you don't see the world and you don't deal with the world. They're completely out of harmony with each other and you've already voted 100% whose side you're on. There's no question whose side I'm on. I am on my side. Now let's go further. Now there's turmoil. Why? Because if things are not out there the way I decided they should be, they're wrong. They're disturbing. So what are you going to do about that? Now we're going to show you free will. Free will has nothing to do with how this manifests out there. Free will has to do with the following. Now that I'm in here and I have my own world that I made up, and y'all are out there, but I've made up how it's supposed to be, and you're not being that way. Now I'm going to show you free will. Bump! On top of your head. (laughs) You will be the way I want you to be. That's my free will. (laughs) All right? I am going to use this force, this power. I do have power. The only way you understand free will is I want you to, for one moment, make believe you don't have it. Just make believe you don't have it. What would it be like if you did not have free will? It would mean the following. Here's what it's like to not have free will. You're in there, and you're aware. That's what it means to be in there. You're aware. And what you're aware of is your mind's in there with you, telling you stuff. What it likes, and what it doesn't like, and what should be, and what shouldn't be, and all that stuff. And you you have senses, and they let you see what's out there. Okay, so now what happens is something out there does not match 
what your mind says it should be. What are you going to do about it? Well, the answer is very simple. If you don't have free will, the answer is easy. Nothing. Well, why wouldn't I do anything? Because you don't have a power. You don't have a power. You're just in there. And you see it's disturbing, but because you don't have power, you do not have the ability to assert yourself. That's will. You don't have the ability to do anything about it. That's will. You only have the ability to be aware. You're in there aware, totally aware. Your mind's freaking out. I don't like this. I don't want to hurt with him. Oh my God, they're dancing together. Oh my God, I don't like this. And there's nothing you can do. You can't make the body move. It could happen, couldn't it? You can't make your arms move. That takes will. That takes an act of will. It's volition. Imagine not having it. Wow. Pretty far out, isn't it? Not that far away. It could happen, couldn't it? <laughs> right? It's just you go, and nothing moves. You do not have the ability to assert your will. I don't know what words I'm going to use for you. You cannot make anything out there move. You're in here. How do I get you to stop dancing with him? There's nothing I can do because I can't assert myself. Now I can do the following. Now I'm going to little by little give you some will back. So now your mind's saying that, and all of a sudden you want to stop it. So your mind says, scream fire. (laughs) Scream fire. And you're in there, and before it just said scream fire, but the mouth wouldn't move, the tongue wouldn't move. No muscles can contract. It requires will to do that. You must push energy down to those muscles to make them happen. You don't have the ability to do that. You don't have will. Now I'm going to give you free will. So you're in there and you go, eh. it's like, I don't know what it's like. I don't know. We just do it. No way. I can't make believe what it's like. You just do it. It's, it's just assert your will. It's the most natural thing you could ever do. And all of a sudden, because you, who have nothing to do with this, decided to assert yourself, the mouth goes, Phew. Muscles move and air comes out and all those actions take place and the word fire gets thrown out into this world. That is an act of will. It's pretty neat, isn't it? So you do have free will, don't you? Free will means you have power in here that has the ability to cause things to happen out here. Wow, far out. So anytime you are asserting that power, you are using your free will. You are free to assert that power however you want. I'm not saying you're free to make her stop dancing with him. That's a totally different question. But you are free to assert your will, aren't you? Certainly compared to what I showed you, not having free will looks like. Where's that power come from? Very deep stuff. I understand the mind, there it all is. Some of the learned experience. I understand the world, you know, physics. (laughs) Just physics out there, right? Well, I told you where it came from. The stars. The stars baked every single atom in creation. Then they blew up and spread it all over. And it all came together with gravitational forces and the forces of physics and created everything you're looking at. And that's the result. And go study that if you don't believe that. That's what science has found. It's beautiful. So that's what's out there. The laws of physics, the laws of creation, the laws of cosmology. It's just so beautiful. And what's in here is what's full of your mind, all that stuff. Then there's you. Free will, I'm going to tell you. You have to experience yourself, but I will tell you. Just listen, then go find it yourself. Will does not come from your mind. And will does not come from the world. Will comes from you, the consciousness. Consciousness is a tremendous power. It's not just aware. It's Shakti. When you concentrate your consciousness, focus it, it creates the power of will. So when you focus on something, you send consciousness, chit-shakti, energy, toward what you're focusing on. And that's how you make your larynx contract, and that's how you make your arm move. Literally, you back there, the consciousness, have this power just by focusing your consciousness. It's so amazing. It's so amazing. So basically, that's what's going on. Those are the forces. Now we see it. Problem is, or not the problem, it's the reality is, that your thoughts, your mind, your emotions, your personal psyche is 100%, oh, maybe 99999 I guess, you know, randomly something's going to line up, out of harmony, out of tune, out of sync with what is going on out here in the physical plane, 
in the reality of that room you're about to walk into. And it will always be that way. Right? Now I'm trying to show you, what do you do about it? One is when the world comes in, it hits your mind. It either matches or it doesn't. Well, guess which one it usually doesn't do. Because the probability of it matching is zero. Right? It ain't going to match. You're not going to walk in that room and get the food you want, everyone's going to wear what you want, and the people you want are going to be there. It's not going to happen. And if you want to look at me and say, yeah, but most of it will make me happy. Oh, no, it won't. You could walk in that room. I'm telling you, if you don't know your mind yet, you better wake up. If 99% was the way you wanted it, you would only watch the 1%. It would just sit there and fetch about that 1% all night. If only this hadn't been like that, I would have been so happy. When it doesn't match, it disturbs the mind. And disturbance is more powerful than pleasantry. It's disturbing. You have a beautiful moment with somebody. You're having a beautiful time together and everything, and everything's wonderful. He or she does one thing, one, or doesn't do one thing that you wanted or didn't want. That's the whole evening. When you go home, that's what you're going to be thinking about. So you have to understand this stuff. I know it's funny, but you've got to understand it. It's because when the mind becomes disturbed, you can't enjoy anything. It's disturbed. When the world comes in and it doesn't match your model inside, and it never does and it never will, it causes disturbance inside. And that is not comfortable. And that's why it's so hard to live in this world. That's why Buddha said all life is suffering. All right? It is, isn't it? You are scared all the time. It is anxious. It is all kinds of stuff. So when you walk in that party, there's all kinds of anxiety. There's all kinds of fear. There is. Why? You are afraid it won't be the way you want. What's going to be out there that I don't like? What's going to be out there that sets me off? What's going to be out there that's disturbing to me? That's what anxiety is. That's why we have so much fear. So now what are you going to do about it? I told you. So you walk in there, it doesn't match. Do you just practice no free will? Just there watching it not match and watching the mind get disturbed? Not one of you do that, right? Every one of you do one of two things, fight or flight. You're either going to go out there and say, oh yeah, we have ways. (laughs) Get with the program. What program? My program, (laughs) You go over there. You stop dancing over there. You change that music. Here, I brought some new music. You go, oh, some wills are going to go out there. You are going to assert yourself to do what? Make it be the way you decided it should be, which has nothing to do with anything in the universe except your stupid past. You're going to use your will. You're going to try and supersede, override the reality of all the forces that ever were to make them be what they want them to be. So I'm going to walk up to that person and going to sit there and say, uh, I want to break in and, and dance with this person. But it's not really I want to dance with the person. It's just I know that when I break in with you, you'll go over and dance with this other person and I want that person to inter- not be dancing with my girlfriend. So I got all this worked out. So I'm going to go in and do this stuff, right? So I walk in there and start imposing my will. That's what I'm doing. I'm imposing my will. But it turns out that there's all these forces in creation that brought you and the person you're dancing with together that are absolutely the most perfect harmony that could ever exist. I don't care. I don't want to hear about it. Do you? Why would I want to hear about it? What's it got to do with what I want? What if you say to me, no, I don't want to. I just look at you like, oh, yeah? I stare right in your eye. Now. Whoa, I love it. Ever done it? Ever imposed your will and not cared about anybody else? Don't blush. This is neat stuff, isn't it? Okay? So you're in there with all this power. And your mind is in there telling you how it's going to be. Because it ain't that way. And you honestly believe that what life is all about is getting it your way. You live in a society. Now, you live in a world. You live on a plane that that is what life is about. It is about making up how you want it to be and making it be that way. What if other people don't want it to be that way? <laughs> Too bad. Survival of the fittest. I mean, who's got the bigger weapon, the bigger gun? And we Like, what is a gun? What is a weapon? A way to assert your will. <laughs> a way to make things. Who, the person who has the bigger bazooka gets to say, I said now. <laughs> Two inches to the right. You're too close still. Yes, sir. Wow. That's why you want power. What is power? What is authority? The right to make it be the way you want. That's what authority means. I have the authority to tell you what to do. That's why people want authority. That's why people want power. That's why people want control. 
Do people have control issues? Do you have control issues? What is a control issue if I didn't just describe it? It is that you have a way you want it to be, and you want it to be that way. I want control. But everybody wants control. Who has control? Pretty frightening, isn't it? That's the cause of all disharmony and all of creation. That's the cause of every war. This is what's going on there. That has laid the model of reality. That's what's taking place. All right? Now let's talk about Dharma and Adharma. Would you like to hear Dharma? Because that's Adharma. That is Adharma. That is Adharmic. That is non truth. That is out of harmony with reality. Here's Dharma. There is a world here. I did not make it. There was a set of thoughts inside of me about me and about the way I wanted it. They're gone. That's not happening anymore. And if it is, I don't listen to it. I am not here. Me who's in here are not here to serve that. I see it as non-truth. It is completely personal. It is something I made up. I can change it in one minute. I don't like you. Oh, I like you. You ever change your mind? How long does it take? (laughs) Isn't that amazing? The thing is so fickle, it's ridiculous. It has nothing to do with truth. I've told you, if you think I'm kidding, right? Some of you walk around, I never liked this person, I never liked that person, right? Somebody comes to you and says, that one? Yeah. You ever met him? No, I just don't like the way he talks or walks or who he hangs out with. He said, do you know what he thinks about you? Why would he think about me? I don't even like him. I was there, I heard him talking to somebody else. He, he thinks you walk on water. I mean, that man thinks you're God. He has such respect for you. He reads everything you ever wrote in classes, and he reads it, he goes afterwards, and he just speaks, really? Really? Yeah. Right? I, I knew somebody else that didn't like He talked them into how great you were. He says, oh, maybe it's not so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me your mind would not change if that conversation took place. It's not truth. It's non-truth. And so you reach a point or at least in this theoretical thing we're talking about, somebody has reached the point of saying, that's not me, that thing going on in there. And I don't think I have the right to impose on other people. In fact, I know I don't have the right to impose on other people. Why would I bother somebody else with this junk? It bothers me enough. (laughs) I don't want to bother somebody else with it. It's just the sum of my learned experiences. If I had different experiences, I'd be different ways. Why should I impose on everybody else? All right, very good. So you have now transcended, it's called transcending your personal self. The self is still in there, the true self, the consciousness. It has just chose not to commit itself to what the personal self is saying. So now what happens? What if that person goes to go into the party? That person has absolutely no idea what is going to be going on when they open that door. And that person does not want to have an idea. They have no preconceived notion, no hopes, no dreams, no concepts, no views, no preferences. They're just there. They're there. They gave up on that whole false junk that we just spent this whole hour talking about. They're just there. They're just there. You can just be there. Okay, you open the door. What do you see? Every other one of you that opened the door are scared to death to open that door. And the minute you open the door, you start looking to see whether what you want is there and what you don't want is there. So you you already got so much going on, it's absolutely unbelievable. Not this person. This person opens the door, and they see what's there. Period. They hear what music's there, right? Let those who have eyes to see, let them see. Let those who have ears to hear, let them hear. That's the epitome of truth. You open the door, you hear the music that's there, you see the people that are there, your consciousness experiences the reality of the situation. How's that? Interesting. Interesting. Beautiful. Why would it not be? There's nobody complaining. There's nobody judging. There's nobody saying I like it or I don't like it. I'm just experiencing it. Wow. It's really different, isn't it? Okay. Now what happens? What about this person's free will? Prior to this, all free will was used to impose the personal self on the impersonal world. That's what your free will is used for. What happens with this being's free will? This being has no motives. They have no preconceived intention. So they're there. All of a sudden, somebody trips and starts to fall down. 
this being is there, observes this situation, reaches out their hands, and catches the person to help them from falling. Pretty simple, isn't it? Well, why would you not? You're not thinking, well, what if she gets hurt when I go to catch her? She may sue me. Not sitting here thinking, well, I look cool. Or, wait a minute, I'm, I'm going over there. I can't deal with this situation. That, that one's more important to me. I last person in line, that, that food I was looking for is only a little bit left. In other words, no personal is going on. So it doesn't mean the person does not assert their will. Their will is in harmony with the reality that's taking place. That is dharma. That's the closest I can get you. That is what it means to be in harmony with creation. Do you see it? So if somebody says to me, I don't know my dharma, you should never know your dharma. If you think you know your dharma, you just made it up in your mind, and now you're going to fight with what's going on, because I have to do my dharma. I can't help you. I have my dharma to do. (laughs) Don't do that. It isn't like that. Your dharma is the action that naturally takes place in harmony with what is happening in creation right now with you out of the way completely so you're not interfering because you do it because you like it or you don't like it. You are now a servant of creation. You are now serving. That's all you're doing is serving and you're not serving yourself. You are in harmony with what is. And that being, as he or she walks through life, is like St. Francis. St. Francis's prayer is really, may I be in Dharma, right? Make me an instrument of thy will. Where there is sickness, let me bring health. Where there's sadness, let me bring joy. Where there's sorrow, let me bring healing. It's sort of like, let me just be a force in creation that works in harmony with what is going on in creation. Let me raise that which is around me. Make me a servant of reality. That's why people like Mother Teresa went and worked with very, very ill people, okay, and all kinds of stuff. It's like, that's where they find themselves because that's where they're needed. A very great saint once said something very beautiful to me. I was talking to her, Mayo Shakti, and I was talking to her, she's a very great soul, and she said something to me, about where I was going, what I was doing, what I wanted to do. I don't know. And she asked me if I wanted to go to India. And I said, I don't want to go. To she said, why not? I said, I just want to stay here and take care of the temple and do my meditation. And she says, not me. I want to be wherever God wants to put me. If he wants me to go to hell, I'll pack my bags in two seconds and I'll go there for him. And I'll stay as long as he wants me to. That's a saint. Hell's not a place you don't want to go. Hell's a place in creation where you can do some good. You're not in it for you. Where could you do more good than helping the people that are in hell? Those people are suffering the most, aren't they? They're in the worst shape. They, they need it the most. So since you're completely surrendered and you ain't in it for you, a truly great being would do just fine there because they're not in it for themselves. You're just serving what is in front of you without concept, view, etc. That is dharma. Do you see how deep that is? And such a being is completely in harmony with truth. Christ was like that. Wherever they put him, the Jews were not supposed to mix with the Samaritans. He did. You're not supposed to be with prostitutes. They're throwing rocks at this person. He stops them. He was just completely in harmony with what was there. That's all there was. When he's in the temple and they're doing money lending in the temple, Asserted as well. But he wasn't being peaceful. He was being in complete harmony with what was taking place. <laughs> you understand that? That was what was at that moment to raise that. And stopping the stones from being thrown was what there was at that moment. And everything was just exactly that way. It is the epitome of Dharma, of living that, that kind of harmony. So you see that you are perfectly capable of living Dharma. You shouldn't understand it, it's not something you think about. You are not there. The great way is not difficult for those who have no preferences. You have ceased this game of taking what you made up inside of you and pitting it against reality and saying, I win. So a spiritual being has no problems. They have let go of the part of themselves that they used to side with. 
the part that said, I know how it's supposed to be and I won't be happy unless it's that way. And I know how it's not supposed to be and I'll be miserable if it ever is that way. They gave up on that part of their being. They let that go. They let go of the personal self. And beautiful, isn't it? Do they assert will? Yes. But both beings assert will. One asserts will based on the personal self. The other asserts will independent of the personal self. They assert will as an act of service for the reality that's unfolding in front of them. Well, how will they know what to do? It will be presented in front of them. They will know it. I'm telling you what it's like to live in that dharma. The energy will rise up inside of you and move in complete harmony with what is unfolding outside of you. And you will not hear any discussion inside your mind. You will not feel any emotion about it. And you will not want any thanks. You will not think you did anything. You are just the witness of this part of creation doing its part in creation. <laughs> all right, that's all. It's not something you're doing. It's, you know, there are no thoughts. There are no concepts, no views, no opinions, no preferences. There's just this complete sense of fulfillment each moment that harmony is taking place and you will feel a complete harmony. But it's just the most amazing thing. You are part of creation. You permit your Shakti and your Chi to serve creation. But this personal self is very strong and you're committed to it. To me, when Christ said, you must die to be reborn, he is saying, you must die of the personal self. You must be willing to stop associating yourself with this personal self and serve reality in order to become who you really are, to become the great being, you know, the higher transcendent being. Otherwise, all you're going to do the rest of your life is use your will to try and make the world around you be the way your mind says it should be. That's all you've done so far, isn't it? <laughs> That's all we're doing from the time we wake up in the morning to the time we go to bed at night is deciding how we want it to be and then figure out how to make it be that way. And then asserting ourselves to try and make that happen. We try to change people to be the way we want them to be. We try to change every single thing there is to be the way we want. There is a life in which that is not what you're doing. It's called the impersonal life. It is called the way of the Tao. It is called the essence of the Dharma. Where you just look at that part of you and say, I don't want to impose myself on anybody anymore. That does not mean I'm not going to assert free will. The question becomes, what is the basis for that free will? Is it my personal mind telling me what to do and how I want it? Or is it reality calling upon me to interact in harmony and to serve what's in front of me? A spiritual being always knows God's will. It's right in front of them. They never know it beforehand. (laughs) Run away from somebody who says, I know God will, follow me, I'll show you. No one knows God's will. It unfolds in front of you. Reality unfolds in front of you. And because you're not busy with your personal stuff, it happens to be what happens because you're not in the way. All of it comes together now. Mayor Baba said, man minus mind. In other words, you in there without that mind and personal stuff equals what? God. Man minus mind equals God. Whoa. Talk about merger. With that gone, you in there start to harmonize completely with what's out here. There are no problems. There's just the service and the oneness of you with the harmony of creation. Well, what if there's a tsunami? Help. First, help, while well, the tsunami's coming, then help, right? I mean, it's just it's perfectly normal, right? It's just perfect harmony with what's there. You just, so what? Just do it. It's going to happen anyways. It's not a problem. It's a situation. And you will find that you have the strength to serve. And you do the best that you can to serve. And that's it. And you'll start to feel this joy, this oneness, this love, this harmony with creation. And ultimately, you will merge. You merge with creation. You feel oneness. That's where the great masters went. Christ said, my Father and I are one. So that's as close as I can get to talk about Dharma. It's a pretty beautiful thing, isn't it? That is your Dharma. Every second of your life, you will be in harmony with what is. You just choose to give yourself to the process of life. Chakradev.